What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five with my man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We are going to be talking through this weekend full of NBA, NFL slate. Um, we're going to talk about each uh, situation here, and but uh, keeping in mind that some of you may be playing the three-day slate. So if you are, we'll, we'll try to include some of the sheets, can try and drop some of that stuff in because he's got them grouped together. I am looking at each slate individually, so I'm doing it a little bit differently. But um, but we'll, we'll talk about it per slate, but we'll drop in, you know, maybe where they rank on the overall grand, grand scheme of the whole three-day slate uh, as we go. Okay. Uh, Sheets, any overall thoughts? And then why don't we share your screen and, and go game by game here? Yeah, let's share my screen here. And the first, the first day, um, uh, the Saturday slate, to me, see, I mean, from a projection perspective, it seems kind of easy. But we'll, but, we'll, but we'll, about which game you want to attack. We could talk about the games as far as get to the spread and all that as well. So first of all, for me, like Las Vegas, Cincinnati is, 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 is clearly the game that, that rates generate the most offense um, and where the majority of the, the good fantasy plays are going to come from. I like both Vegas and Cincinnati more than either New England or Buffalo. Um, and so I imagine, I imagine that's what a lot of people are going to do um, mm -hmm. and just kind of cram in those types of, uh, those types of plays. I don't think it's, I don't want to say it's close. I mean, it's a two game slate. Anything's possible, but um, it's, it seems as though that's, that's what you're going to want to do. Um, uh, as far as this first game goes, I'm, I'm a sucker for, for this. I'm a sucker for revenge on the road. Cincinnati went into the Vegas and won. So I'm going to go ahead and take Vegas uh, uh, plus the five and a half uh, at Cincinnati. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how that works out. Um, that looks really, that seems pretty scary. Um, but that's, uh, Hey, just the way I like it. So, uh, I would, I would attack the passing games of really of both of these, of both of these teams on the two game slate for sure. Now, if, if you're going to play a full six game, I actually don't have either of these teams. It's like better than some of these Sunday or Monday's games, but as far as Saturday goes, I do like Vegas and, and Cincinnati more than, than the, uh, than the other two. And so for the Vegas side, it would be, you know, Renfro and Waller would be the receivers and it would be Cincinnati, you know, Chase and Higgins as far as the primary receivers. Um, uh, I guess that's a good start. Or what, what do you think of this, the, the, this uh, the first game? Yeah, this is where most of the action is going to be focused on. So I will be trying to play some other stuff. Um, okay. But, but, uh, but Burrow to, to Chase Higgins, Boyd, even all three is viable. <laughs> like, but Boyd is, is the one who does save you. So I don't mind if you maybe skip Chase, who's going to be popular, or skip Higgins and play Boyd with one of the other two, who'll be, be a little bit less owned. It's still going to have ownership. Um, I think Joe Mixon's a really good play, probably the best running back on this slate. Yep. Um, I think that Jacobs would be the second best running back on this yep. slate. And I have no interest in Renfro. Um, I just I think that he's going to be really, really, really popular. And I'm going to try to avoid that. I do think Zay Jones is interesting, but I would mostly focus my attention on uh, uh, Darren Waller. And I know that's going to be popular as well, but I prefer Waller, even though he has struggled as the where Cincinnati, you can beat them the easiest. Um, Mixon, Burrow, Jacobs, I'm sorry, Mixon, Burrow, Jacobs, and Walk and Waller being the priorities for me in this game with mixing in two of uh, the Cincinnati receivers, maybe even all three with Mixon and just go for the absolute hammer stack is, is the way is the right way to go. But I will probably play Boyd with one of the other two in my main lineups because I want to get a little bit off the chalk. And that's really hard to do in this game. Even Uzoma is going to have ownership. So he'd be the other one I would look at. But uh, they're all going to have some some pretty decent ownership here. And there's nobody I really love off the board. I think that Brian Edwards as a spend down is interesting. Uh, along with uh, Jones, like Jones is the more obvious play, but Brian Edwards could easily be that, you know, outscore him and he's 3,300. So that's maybe your, your low owned play that I like the most. I mean, Deshaun Jackson, yeah, one play, but it's just, we haven't seen it yet for the, or we've seen, I haven't seen it in a while. Um, so I don't know. I, I personally like Cincinnati, like everything logical in me says Cincinnati's going to absolutely thrash this team, but the Raiders have some sort of magic stuff going. Their defensive front is pretty good um they could get to burrows and beat him up that guy gets hurt like every game and still toughs through it because he holds the ball for a while but um 
but but that, that, you know keep in mind something like that could happen and it could shift this game and and even if Burroughs is playing banged up because every game it seems like he gets hit like 50 times and this is a good defensive front for for the Raiders oddly enough they give up a ton of running yard uh, rushing yards but they do have a solid front overall for, in terms of attacking the quarterback so their defense has been solid um, if you want to try and find reasons to fade this game. And, and then maybe what you can do as we transition into the next game, and I'm curious at your thoughts, but, you know, may, maybe playing the Josh Allen with the, with their stacks and he'll, he'll still be popular, but that's certainly a, a route to go. I can't quite get myself to play Mac Jones. And on when there's only four quarterbacks to choose from a guy being like five or 6% owned should be appealing. Um, but it's, it's really hard for me to get there. Um, what are you doing with this game? I'm not playing a shred of 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 of, of offense against the Bills until further notice. Um, uh, and and uh, first of all, my opinion on the game, um, I I I think that that Buffalo is is uh, is the clear play here in this game. I think it's going to be a low scoring game. I don't think the I, I really don't think the Patriots are going to be able to do anything against against the Bills defense. And I think that that uh, Patriots defense is going to be good enough to keep to keep Buffalo from putting up big numbers too. You know, uh, look, the weather's going to stink uh, in Buffalo. Without even looking at the weather, I, I could promise you it's going to stink. Mm -hmm. it's, it's January and it's Buffalo. It's either going to be cold or snowy or windy or all three. It's just going to be one. It's it's just going to be the case. And this is playoff football, and in 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 the, in Buffalo with no dome. I mean, you know, it's just I just I just. I'd, I'd rather I could if I could play zero of the game, I'd play zero of it. Um, and, and I know that that's going to be the chalk way to play, and the ownership is going to be all in Vegas, and Cincinnati. But I've just seen too many of these freaking games before, where 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 this where no one scores twenty points. You know, it's going to be I, in my world, it's like seventeen to six Buffalo or something like that. So I, I don't I don't I really don't like much of anything. Um, and which is probably why this two game slate for me is going to be pretty pretty unappealing because every, every build I have is going to look something like the one I threw up here. Like literally everybody in the base, <laughs> like one Buffalo or New England defense, just for, just because I have to. Um, that's just the way I, I'm, 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 uh, I'm approaching it. Yeah. It's, uh, I like, I like New England in this game. Um, I, I do. I think it's close between these teams, to be honest with you. And I, I actually think Buffalo is gets a reputation they don't really deserve. They haven't really been that good at all um, for basically this whole season. And the, you know they, they didn't they didn't even look good in when they were playing the the weak teams that they were playing. So no, they lost to Jacksonville. Like it, like they scored nine, nine points against Jacksonville. They didn't play against Jacksonville. They, they looked like play. crap against the Jets last week. That's right. Yep. And. Um, and 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 I think that Belichick will do his his you know his best to stop this, this these guys and Singletary is going to be crazy popular. Um, yes. uh, he's been good and maybe that is the way you can get around. They're going to try to stop Josh Allen as best you can. I don't really know how you entirely do that, but the weather is going to help too. Um, it does feel like if the weather you know stays bad, I think that Cole Beasley is going to be popular. But I actually like him because uh, it's it's a spot where like he, you know, they, they're going to, you're going to look for more underneath passes. So both he and Dawson Knox, who's going to be low owned. I think those are really good plays. I actually really like the Dawson Knox play. And I like that a lot. Actually. He's going to be low owned. Um, and you'll get Henry on the other side with more ownership. But if you look at it, why, why wouldn't it be Dawson Knox over Henry? I mean, just in terms of, I don't even know why the projection is higher on, on Henry. I really don't. I really don't. They could go to John. They could also throw it to Johnny Smith. And it's not like they, you know, Knox has the, the workload to himself. Um, Kendrick Bourne is the, is the weird piece that I would want to use because New England will bring out a, a weird player too, specifically like, I mean, he might, he might throw a touchdown pass. This yeah. week. Um, on, on top of it, he has, he has some big playability and has been fairly consistent in terms of at least getting some work. They'll run him, they'll run him a few times, you know, maybe he breaks one play. And I, so I do like Kendrick Bourne. Um, I am not going to probably play Jacoby Myers, even though the price looks right. It's a tough matchup. I, I pre would prefer Diggs, Beasley, and Gabriel Davis. And then the one guy who, who's going to be the really cheap, really unknown guy is Nelson Aguilar. And I actually think that they, you know, they, they, they do look for Aguilar sometimes. So I, I mean, he has, it's been a while. He was more in the middle of the season. They were, they were using him more, but that's just your weird off the board or, or low owned play. 
as well as Isaiah McKenzie, who could always run one back and potentially uh, get a little bit of work in the passing game if Emmanuel Sanders is out. If Emmanuel Sanders is in, I probably would take a shot or two there, but I still would like Beasley um, as a possession receiver on, on DraftKings. So that's the way I have this one rated. Priorities for the slate, Burrow to two of the receivers, Mixon, Jacobs, uh, uh, DJ, uh, sorry, uh, Waller, um, Born, Knox, Allen to one of Beasley, Diggs, and Davis. Really hard to get different. So trying to trying to use guys like uh, Knox and stuff like that is going to be important and potentially leaving a little bit of money on the table is a reasonable route to go this week on the Saturday yeah. slate. You want to move on to the Sunday slate? Let's do the Sunday slate and then we can uh, we can talk about the Monday afterwards. Sure. Okay. So uh, Philadelphia, Tampa Bay. So I, I against the spread, I'm going to take Philly in this spot. Um, for no other reason than I just can't find a soul who could who could be on that who's on that side. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try Philly plus the points. It makes just no sense at all. But um, uh, you know th th that's what I'm gonna do. So I like I like Philly against the spread. Uh, as far as as DFS goes, um, I do like Tampa um, as one of the top uh, one of the top three teams. Um, Brady to 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 Evans and to Gronk. I like I I do like that a lot. Um, I don't have much of a run back available to me on Philly, so I don't I don't know what to do about it. But oh, I know. Excuse me. Um, the best tight end like on the whole board is is Goddard, right? So 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 uh, of all six games, I think that Goddard is is clearly for me at least the best tight end. I like him what better than Waller. I just like him the best. And uh, he, they're going to be coming back, and, and Goddard, I think, will be one of the main guys. And uh, so that's what I like. Uh, Tampa with Brady, Evans, Gronk, running back with, um, with, with Goddard. I don't have any interest in, in, in the Philly offense aside from that. So I, I love the, the Hurts passing game idea here. Uh, Tampa has been absolutely terrible at guarding. I mean, they, they've just gotten so bad against any any receivers so I actually like Hertz to Smith um quite a bit in this game and he's going to be pretty popular Smith but uh but Smith and Goddard are both good plays and I think Hertz will be low owned um on the other side I I really think Brady I, I think they are different without these real receivers except for Mike Evans and Gronk um uh, I, I like, I mean, my first thought is I kind of like the over in this game a little bit. I think Philadelphia can put up more points than they're getting credit for. I, I do think that the, the, the Tampa Bay should handle them pretty easily. Uh, at least it should look that way at the end. I think Cameron Braid is a weird play. You could, you could get involved. Well, that's cool. that's and, and, and no one seems to want to play Gronk. Um, I, I don't mind. Play. I don't mind the idea of playing Gronk in the playoffs uh, yeah. with all the, the receivers down. So it would be Brady to um, basically Brady to to Evans, uh, Gronk. Is Gronk really going to be this low? Is that right? Is there something I'm missing? Because of, Wall like, of Waller and Goddard, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's Waller's on the other slate. I keep forgetting. Yeah. Well, there's Kelsey on the slate too, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, but I just well, yeah, I'm just trying to think though. It doesn't really. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure it out because it's it does feel a little funny to me. I, I'd actually don't mind if you want to include like include like a guy like Quez Watkins, Tyler Johnson on the uh, Tampa Bay side is interesting to me um, as a, as another as an additional receiver to uh, to Evans. Um, but mostly, I want to stick with the 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 Gronk, Evans, Devonte Smith, Goddard, Hertz, and 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 then in terms of the running game, if if Fournette plays, which he should, is going to be the highest owned uh, running back on this slate and on the oh. on the Sunday slate and I think that's interesting and, and the price on Miles Sanders if he's in will be tempting but I will remind everybody that nobody ever runs the ball on Phil on Tampa and Philly will use four running backs yeah so yeah just, just keep that in mind Quez Watkins another one that you could look at potentially um I have him on the outside more but uh Brady to, to Evans Gronk and then I would put uh, Tyler Johnson as my next one but actually I mean, let me just double check that if I want to if I want to commit to that because we lost you know the guy who I played everywhere on like the first play last week it felt like um, but Perriman or or Tyler or Tyler Johnson probably more so Tyler Johnson I think are definitely in play here and I think we should be looking at one of those guys as, as potential uh, 
options. Uh, that's that's way to get a little bit a little bit different with your with your popular stacks. Um, Good games this day, geez. Yeah, it's a tough style matchup for the Eagles because they love to run the ball, you know. Yep. Um, and you just can't run on Tampa, so mm-hmm. it's um, it's 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 you know what? It's gonna be uh. It's going to be uh, up to Hurts. It really is. You know, if you can, if you can get any, get something going, like you said, with Smith and, and Goddard, I think that's their chance. Um, I, uh, well, you know what? You're in the NFL, dude. You've, <laughs> you've got your hype. Let's see what you can do, you know? But he, um, he's going to run himself. Like, that's a little different. Yeah. They stopped the running game, but, but a running quarterback could be a very different story. That's true. Um, you get pressure on him, and then what good does that do if the guy can just right. escape and get around it? Um. All right, so uh, so what about the next one for you? So for me, San Francisco Dallas. Uh, this is um, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna bite with this one because uh, it seems though San Francisco is like the super sharp play. I mean, you have my friend Jack likes them. They're only three at Dallas. I mean, who the hell is taking? So it seems like San Francisco is a super sharp play. I, I'm I'm not interested. I I I kind of I kind of think Dallas is is kind of a kind of a not even sneaky, but kind of a low key juggernaut uh, coming into the playoffs. Um, and, uh, I'll, I'll, I, I don't think San Francisco can win a shootout here. And, and I don't think they're, I, I, I look, I, I'm like San Francisco's defense in general. I don't, I don't think they're going to be able to stop Dallas's offense. And I think that San Francisco is not going to be able to put up points with Garoppolo against an underrated Dallas defense just to match them. So I do like the Dallas side of this against the spread. And, um, I like Dallas's, uh, that's it. I like Dallas's offense here too. I like, uh, Prescott, Lamb, Cooper, just you know, just the normal guys. Um, I'm not gonna play Elliott, Zeke. That's something I don't want to do. Really, I don't really want to try to run against San Francisco. Um, but I certainly want to want to take my shot that Dallas brings their brings their offense to the playoffs and and puts up some points and uh, and 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 wins this game pretty. I don't want to say comfortably, but I think I think I think they put up a number here and I think they 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 set the tone for the rest of the playoffs. So that's that's where I'm at in this game, both against the spread. Um and, and from 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 a positional perspective, uh you want to run something back for San Francisco? Sure. Um Ayuk, maybe Samuel. I mean the same guys, Kittle, whatever it is. But I think those are secondary plays now. I, I don't know. Uh, that's just where I am. Yeah, um, I certainly understand that your your take. Uh, I I I think Dallas has a lot looks a lot better on paper than they actually have played against good teams for a while. Possible. Um, so I, I I don't know though. I, I don't know that I want to take San Francisco here. I feel like this is a fair spread. I feel like this is a game that I probably would just stay away from. Um, I, I do trust you know San Francisco once they you know being in the playoffs. Like I do I do trust what what Shanahan can do offensively. Yeah. I think you're going to see a bunch of a bunch of a lot of the running game. I don't think you're going to see anybody play any San Francisco receiver. And I think and I'll tell you why I think it's a mistake. First of all, the, the game script would tell you that they would need to keep up and, and coming coming from behind and all that stuff. The only one they're going to play is Kittle. But I'm just going to point out that Juwan Jennings in a must win game last year, Ooh. last week, had six catches for. Uh, 94 yards and two touchdowns. There are only two touchdowns. Wow, there. that's that's pretty interesting. So no one's going to play Juwan Jennings. Um, I think you play one of I. I think I would try to prioritize one of Ayuk or Jennings, if for no other reason than just for the lack of ownership. Um, that's that's really the the main thing for me. I actually have Amari Cooper rated a little bit ahead of um, Lamb, but I certainly like them both. Uh, I I think this is a team you can throw the ball on. So I actually like the DAC side of this too. Um, and I think Dak will be the lower owned of the quarterbacks. So I, I think that's kind of an interesting route to take. And then I do like Eli Mitchell as the running back on the other side, uh, for San Francisco, even though, again, he could always lose touches to, to all the rest of their guys, but you know, you got to try and play some guys and, uh, and Mitchell, Mitchell, one of Iuk or Jennings on the San Francisco side. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to get up to Samuel. I do like Kittle, but I just don't want to play the, you know, he's going to have ownership, but it's, I, I would rather take the really low owned guys for San Francisco because I think that Shanahan will do some weird stuff. And I don't think I'm going to play Dalton Schultz, but I think he's viable. But I think that the, uh, the Cooper lamb and then, you know, Cedric Wilson, I know that last week, the last game was not really, but Cedric Wilson caught both of his touchdowns while Cooper and lamb were in the game. And the week before, um, we saw we saw it similarly. We had another touchdown, and he had another you know six catches there. Um, so I think Cedric Wilson is a really good off the board play here. Um, and you can mix in these 
Wilson's or Ayuk's or Jennings, but those are your low owned plays that I think are all very interesting. And we know Dak can go through his reads because he'll stay in the pocket longer. And that gives him more time to find his other receivers, which always has made it's been helpful for guys like Gallup and Cedric Wilson now as the third as the third option. So that's that that's the way that I'm attack this game personally. Um, All right, what are you doing in this last this the game the finale here? This is an interesting one. Yeah, so I mean, you you know what I'm doing. I mean, Ben Ben Roth, Ben Roth spirit comes right out and says they have no chance to win. So I'll I'll try it. Uh, I'll take the twelve and a half. Um, that that sounds good enough to me. Uh, I really do hope for Pittsburgh's sake that they don't just put it on Ben Big Ben's arm. Um, I'm not. I, I really, if I were them, I would really just get the ball in, in Najee Harris's hand like a hundred times, like either running the ball out of the backfield, hope it's enough to keep up with Kansas City, hope the defense holds Kansas City close enough that they stay in the game. Um, you know, I think Pittsburgh's competitive enough that they could keep it within 12 and a half. Um, so I like them against the spread. How, however, um, from, from a fantasy perspective, it's kind of kind of silly to not like these Kansas City guys. Um, you know, uh, Mahomes, Hill, Kelsey, um, I, I don't really – feel the need to try the running backs. Um, but I think it's, uh, I think the case, KC, KC, they're good at offense and they've been, look, they've, they've, they weren't, they're not as good this year as they have, as they have been, but they still so show flashes. And if they bring everybody healthy to the table, um, I mean, I want to say Pittsburgh can't stop them, but really nobody. Can, right. So, so, so I do like Kansas city as one of the teams I want to target, um, offensively on this slate. And, um, I'm not playing KC defense or anything like that. Um, I'm not going to play Pittsburgh defense either. Uh, I'll play, but I do like Najee Harris. Uh, Najee Harris I have is my my uh, third, well, actually San Francisco, the Rams aren't on this slate. So I have actually Harris as the best running back. Well, I didn't know that Fournette was going to be reassigned. I didn't know that he was going to be back. So I don't have a projection on him yet, but but. It, so, but aside from that, I do like Harris the best of all the running backs this week in the slate. Mm, interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I think that this is a really interesting spot here. Uh, like this, all these games are, are, are good. I mean, obviously it's the playoffs, but like they're, they're, they're good games for DFS. Um, so I would go, I do think that trying to get one of Pringle or Hill to go along with the other guys I mentioned as the, as the cheapos who aren't going to be owned on this slate. They definitely make sense. Uh, Pringle or uh, so Hardman last week, um, it, you know, that not a must win, but a game they were trying to win. He had eight catches for 100 yards and yeah. a touchdown. And that's a, we haven't really seen that kind of production out of him that much. And I know we had a lot, we lost Tyree Kill for a bit in that game. But, but even before that, uh, he and Pring, one of he or Pringle, I have Pringle rated a little bit higher, but I think that one of those guys is interesting. Obviously, I like Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey. Um, I don't even think there's much of a, a thing to add to that um and on the on this on the pittsburgh side i think deontay johnson is going to get all the work he can handle and i think he's a, a preferred play for me ahead of Najee. um so I, I would go one of those two but claypool at 4400 is kind of a crazy 4700 is, is kind of a crazy price for the upside so I, I would play claypool ahead of either of those guys but he'll be more popular so i think deontay johnson might be a little bit overlooked like something like a, a Johnson Cooper uh, starting point for your receivers, uh, like a 20 ish percent owned, I think is an interesting way to go. And then maybe you could play this Smith with Hertz and with maybe Gronk and, you know, on the other side with Fournette, then you can get a little bit off the board in a few spots. Something like that is sort of like a core that I'm looking towards right now. Um, but you've got good tight ends at everywhere in this game. So it's going to leave, it's going to leave Dalton Schultz and, uh, and what's his name? Um, uh, Friar Muth completely unowned. So I just think that's another interesting way to build. But I, I do have Ayuk and Jennings, Pringle or Hill as the, as the long shot plays, uh, along with, uh, you know, who else do I have here? This is, uh, oh, I, I combined my, uh, no, yeah, her, I'm sorry, and, and, uh, and Tyler Johnson in the, in the first game with Tampa Bay. So all of these are good games. Um, Mitchell and Fournette are my favorite running backs, I believe. Um, that's certainly subject to change, but that's what I've got for right now. And it is interesting that Zeke is 6,100 and not going to be owned that much at Pollard plays. So maybe we should mix in some Zeke as well. Um, let's talk about the Rams, Arizona game. Um, 
They don't even have a showdown slate for it up on the board yet. Um, I only see it as far as the Saturday, Monday slate right now. Um, so we could talk about the game in general. Um, I, cause I, I actually handicapped it with respect to the six game slate. Okay. Let's talk about it from the six game slate. So I could start because I actually, in the entire six games, I have a uh, cup as the best overall play on the whole, the whole card. You know, um, if you play a six, the six game slate, then you could play cup, for example. And I also have Michelle as the best running back actually um, of anybody in the entire six game slate. Now, again, the only way you could play the play these guys is if you play the six game slate, I think, or wait for the showdown to uh, to be posted. I don't know how else you, you, you get in there. Um, and then uh, I do I I do have an opinion. I I look now you 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 watch these Rams more than more than anybody. Um, I I I I think Arizona is kind of fraudulent. I don't know. I I, th- I think the Rams handle them. I just do. I, I think that. Control the ball if they have to. They'll they'll throw it to cup if they have to. They'll have, they'll have their you know they'll put the defense out there. They'll be good enough to with with control Arizona. And what's the spread here? Five maybe. It's uh four Less, four four. four. I'll, I'll lay the four the Rams. With, I'll lay the four with the Rams and uh, and uh, and I like the the top guys. I like Michelle. I like um I like um what's his name uh, Cup. And I would play Stafford against them too. Yeah, on the six game slate, I would have no interest in Stafford personally. Um, For the same same reason we've, we've discussed every uh, every week, right? Right, every week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Compared to these other guys, there, there's you know the ceiling is just not the same. I mean, it's it's there. It just doesn't. He doesn't ever realize it. Right. Um, the Arizona gives the Rams a lot of trouble. Um, okay. I'm a little worried about this game. Okay. So I, I don't have a, a strong betting take on this one, uh, especially um, for what it's worth. I do think KC beats Pittsburgh, but I don't. I also think the twelve and a half is is live. Yeah, we'll go over. We'll go over the, the our, okay. our picks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I I really think that AJ Green is going to be the underowned of the of the receivers and. Like that. There's been a lot of big plays that could have gone his way. I mean, look, you had nine targets last week and just didn't get there. Um, but there's been some like bombs they went for him. I mean, one, he just didn't lay out for like, it would have been, it could have been, I mean, if he just put both of his arms out, actually, he could have had like an 80 yard touchdown in one of those games. So his numbers would look a lot different. Um, but green and Wesley are the two, un, the two unowned guys who I would have a little bit of interest in. And Wesley has been like consistently productive, uh, lately. I mean, not, not in a massive way, but you know, he's had, he had, uh, he had, uh, what a touchdown against Indy a few weeks back Then against Dallas, he had four catches and a touchdown. I'm sorry, four catches and two touchdowns. And then last week against Seattle, he didn't do much, but they did look for him twice in the end zone. So that was nice to see. But those are just long shot plays for your for your full slates. Um, for the for the full slate, uh, Ertz is definitely would be would be in play for me as a, as a tight end option. Uh, they really do. Kyler and him definitely do have a connection. But I think Higby also. I mean, we saw Higby with the two touchdowns last week, and uh, he's an interesting way to get off of. Uh, what should be pretty chalky Cooper Cooper cup, who I agree is the best option, but I would like to point out that, you know, one thing we always look for against Arizona and nothing was, nothing has been anything, but it couldn't have been more true down the stretch that the secondary receivers have really had big games against them. And uh, I could see one of Beckham or Jefferson having a monster game. I think I would lean Beckham ahead of Jefferson. Um, But I like the AJ green and, you know, Kirk is, is fine. Um, I like the price, but I, I think that A.J. Green is more of the, the guy who's going to end up getting more of the targets. And it, Christian Kirk is more expensive and will be about five times, maybe eight times higher owned. Um, so that's that's the way I would treat this. I have zero interest in Sony Michelle as a running back here. Ooh, okay. I think Cam Akers is going to get way more work than people are giving him credit for. He actually, on in terms of snaps last week, what did he have? Like almost 40 percent, 35 percent or something of the snaps um something it was close to that I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head but he's their guy Michelle is I, I like him fine but I mean also Arizona's run defense has been pretty good um de- especially down the stretch so I, I would I would not in six game play game slate be playing them obviously in a showdown you could play all these guys um and I would just side even if Edmonds is back I I kind of like James Connor here um on the big slate because we see we know he can put up a crazy number I'm trying to double check what he did against the Rams this year because I know that they were splitting carries but I think I remember him having 
yeah, he had 30, he had 33 fantasy points in, uh, what, in week 14 against them. Um, and then he had 20 fantasy right. points the first time against them. So it, he does bring some, some problems for them. Uh, you know, you can run the ball occasionally on the Rams and you can, you can break for big plays and Connor fits the description for both. So that's another route you could go for with this game. Um, but I didn't, I didn't, hadn't done much research on this one yet because I was sort of just waiting for the showdown thing, but, um, that's the only way I'll probably play it. I don't think I'm going to play it. You know what? Now that we did this, I probably will play the full slate, but man, there's a lot of good options to choose from, huh? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a tough week. And, and, and also all these tough options. One thing I would just encourage people to have a strategy going into the playoffs. Remember that the opposing coaches know this as well. So when you have guys who are the, the obvious options and everybody wants to play them, and they get targeted all the time, like a Cooper Cup type of situation. Uh, you do have Peter, uh, Patrick P Peterson against him, who's not a lockdown corner by any means, but certainly would give him more trouble. We saw it the last week, you know, T Tyler Lockett being the, sec sort of the secondary receiver to, to Metcalf had a huge week against the Rams. So maybe playing a, a guy like, uh, like Odell Beckham would be a, not exactly a hot take, but I don't think he's going to have ownership on this slate at all on the, on the full slate. And I think he's a really, really interesting route to go. Maybe you play him and Connor and then play literally your, your favorite chalk and you're way, already way off the board. Right. Um, that's something I think is really interesting and viable. But uh, let's go through the games real quick. Okay, so Vegas, Cincinnati. I like Cincinnati to cover, but, I, you know, I believe in stupid things like magic and there's, there's not magic, but I believe in like the, there, there's like crazy things that happen and some teams are destined, destined and all this stuff. This Raiders season, the way it worked out every which way feels like a team of destiny kind of a thing. They were they were literally like 2% to make the playoffs at one point. And here they are. Um, still, I like Cincinnati. Um, but I don't feel like adamant about it as much as I as it's the one I feel best about, but I don't feel like really strongly. I will take Cincinnati and lay the points. You're going to take Vegas? Yeah. Okay. Um, not straight up, just the points, right? Yeah, just the points. Okay. And I will take – I'll take New England with the points just okay. because I don't feel – first of all, you're not getting enough of a payout on them winning. But I, I – and I could see being very wrong here. Uh, but I think if I'm very wrong, you're talking about a 7- to 10-point game. And I think if I'm, if I'm right, you're talking about a game that ends within, a one, within one score. So um, – I do like New England a little bit here. And I actually, I, I still think New England has an excellent chance to win this game. And uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. Yep. So I'll take Buffalo. So we got two, we got two. I love it. We're totally so on far. opposite pages of every, of every game so far. Let's see. What about Philly, Tampa, Philly, Tampa. I will take, even though I made all these DFS cases, I think I would, uh, I just then don't got to put that aside somehow, you know, it's, it's tough. Um, Seems like an appropriate spread to me. Uh, I, I, with the way Tampa's looked, I'm going to take Philly with the points. But I feel like this – I, you know what? You pick first. I, I'll, I think I'll take the op – I think I will. You know what? Tampa Bay could win this game in, by, like, four touchdowns, and it wouldn't surprise me at all. But I think I, – I th you know what? I think I am going to take Philly in the points. It just feels okay. – I'll, 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 I'll yeah. take Philly, too. So we're, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll have no okay. action on that one. We'll lose it to um, San Francisco, Dallas. God, that feels crazy to me. It's just, I mean, literally, if, if they had Antonio Brown or one other receipt, one of those guys healthy, I would have been all over Tampa Bay here. I, I just think that their offense is not the same quite. Um, and if Fournette, if Fournette's healthy, then maybe that helps. Anyway, uh, San Francisco, Dallas. Uh, I know you're taking Dallas, so I will take – I don't like ever taking San Francisco <laughs> – um, but I, but I'm going to take San Francisco with the points and I, it's weird though. Cause I, I wouldn't be surprised if this one went differently too, but I do like San Francisco here. Uh, Pittsburgh, KC, I'm, I'm taking, I'll, I'll take outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, I'll take KC. Okay. And then, uh, Arizona Rams, I will take the Rams and you can, I know you can't bet against the Rams. So, uh, yeah, but this one worries me a little bit. I'll, I'll take the Rams, but I don't feel good about it. Okay. Um, um so you guys read between the lines. He actually likes Arizona, but you know what I mean? But he's, he's just not doing it. I, I get it. I get it. I, I, not I necessarily it. to win. They get a three and a half, too. They can uh, that's, that's it. You get, you get the three and a half. Yeah. So our action is going to be on Kansas City, um, Dallas. No, no, no. Dallas. Every, every, it's on everything but, uh, but Philly, the uh, – Except for Philly and, and, and the Rams. Philly and the – well, no, the Rams I'm on the same side as you. We both hit the Rams. That's what I'm saying. But we're yeah, different yeah. on every other one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Right. 
We're different. Um, on, we're we're different on on Vegas, Cincinnati, New England, Buffalo, yeah. and San Francisco, Dallas, and Pittsburgh, KC. That's right. Okay. All right. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Yeah. Well, good luck to everybody this weekend. Um, I don't know what we're gonna do in terms of shows. I'll, I'll, I'll I can always try and pop in at some point, but I don't know if I'll do it right before lock. I, I will. I will post at everyone in the Discord when I figure out the exact. You schedule. mean like basketball tomorrow or something like that? No, I mean like Saturday, Sunday. Um, what oh I'm yeah, do. presume presume I'm out. Okay, so so but we'll see. Me. I mean, I, like I said, I might pop in, pop in or whatever. But. Okay. All right. Well, sounds good. Good luck to everybody this week. It's a big weekend, and uh, let's crush it. Good All luck. right. See you later, Bobby. I'll see you.